Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage live from Caesars Palace of CrowdStrike's Falcon 23. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. You can hear the buzz probably behind us. About 4,000 or so folks here. This is the seventh annual Falcon. This is our second time covering it. We're going to be talking with Madhu Balaji next, Senior Global Partner Architect, Worldwide Public Sector at AWS. We're going to be talking about zero trust architecture in AWS. Great to have you on the program, Madhu. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Give us that, that definition from AWS's mindset. How does it define the concept of zero trust in the context of cloud security, and why is that so important for all organizations using AWS services? Sure, so at AWS, we believe in innovating for our customers, and we want to do uh, a lot of undifferentiated heavy, heavy lifting for our customers so that they can focus on their uh, innovation, right? So similar uh, thing on security aspect, and when our customers come in and ask like how their security patterns right now align with zero trust, because zero trust is the key bu buzzword right now. So at AWS, we have a definition for that. Like it's basically a conceptual uh, security principle and associated set of mechanism where we want to secure the digital assets and uh, not relying just on the network perimeter. So that's the key area of zero trust wherein, like say for example, if I want to uh, say it in uh, normal terms, like say when you go to airport security, you have perimeter security wherein you are checked just for your, who you are and all that. And then when you go in, at every point, like when you want to board a plane or when you want to go shop something, you are checked again. So th that's very uh, similar to what zero trust is and this is something what I read in an article which is really great example to define zero trust. And also, like security being our core, uh, one of the key principles on uh, our AWS platform, we focus uh, heavily on security and also we rely on zero trust. It was interesting, it was, uh, it was reinforced two years ago. Uh -huh. I was sitting in a breakout session, it was like an analyst session, and it's interesting you said it's kind of the buzzword, because it, it, it was a real big buzzword that didn't have any meaning. Right. And the, the, the technical architects at AWS at the time, look, we didn't jump into the whole zero trust buzz, yep. but we kind of have to now. So here's our perspective. And I thought they did a really good job of describing it. You know, as you did in, in very simple terms just now, they went deep. And so it was quite useful. My question is related to public sector. The CIA deal was a seminal moment within, within AWS's history. It was a milestone. Mm -hmm. Because everybody was like, well, the cloud, you know, is it really secure? And the CIA, you know, you had right. with the GovCloud. So your, your bar is very high right. in public sector. Right. And I would imagine the same is true now for zero trust. What is the narrative like with zero trust in, in public sector now? Is it, you, is it a higher bar? Is it, is it more intense than it is in, in the commercial world? Or is, or is the commercial world kind of caught up? Uh, I, I would say, uh, like, we, we don't, the security itself, we cannot differentiate between commercial and public sector, uh -huh. right? But at the same time, for public sector, there are specific uh, security checks you need to add additional security. So the base platform is the same across commercial and public sector, and then for public sectors, we add more checks. And also, the way we see it is, it is all defined by the guiding principles on zero trust, what we have defined. So. We don't want to just rely on like a, it is not a binary choice of being a identity focused or identity centric or network centric. And that applies to the public sector as well. Wherein you want to bring in both together and then see it as a holistic implementation. And especially for public sector, you mentioned CIA. So we have different levels or regions where they are hosted and which is not, which is outside of regular commercial imp implementation. So that way, the, even the entry point itself is at a very high level, having a higher bar, which will uh, eliminate a lot of um, um, incoming threats or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, actually, yeah. Talk about some of the challenges that customers are facing, whether they're in public sector or commercial, in terms of adopting zero trust, and how is AWS helping them, especially as they might be multi-region, hybrid cloud? Yeah. How are you helping them overcome those challenges? So the main thing is, what we want to explain to customers is, zero trust is not uh, end uh, goal in the sense, it's not 
kind of uh, tool or uh, product which you just buy and implement. It's like a journey. Like it, you need to implement those core principles and then implement step by step. So in, in that regard, uh, <coughs> for our customers, like being very um, security focused, uh, protecting against internal and external trust, so that is very uh, important. And also, securing your endpoints by default is key to success across commercial and public sector. Well, and I think, you know, when you look at these frameworks, like a NIST framework or, you know, zero trust architecture fits into that, the hard part that customers that I talk to have is, okay, okay, I get it, but how do I operationalize it? And so, you, things like verified access yep. help customers operationalize. Can you explain that? Sure, I, I, that, that's a good point. So, when we talk to our customers, what we ask is, what is their outcome? Right? What are they looking for? And then we work backwards from there, and that's our whole focus. We want to understand customer problem and so work we've backwards. Heard. Right? <laughs> so uh, in terms of verified access, so this is a new service which was announced uh, in preview la during last reInvent, yep. and we went uh, li uh, GA in, I think, April or May mm -hmm. this year. So this basically eliminate the need of using VPN for, like say, if you're an employee, you want to access your internal applications, uh, you have you need to have your own uh, laptop, which is like completely frozen, and then you need to connect to VPN. So there's so many hassles like you have to get through even just to connect, right? And this uh, verified access is basically built on zero trust principle, wherein it will minimize all the need of uh, like uh, going through the hoop. And also, what it does is it simplifies the user experience and also operations, like. When you want to get access to your internal application, like say you want to check your payroll, paycheck, right? So for that, first you need to, if you're outside your office, and I'm from, I've worked with financial services company for 15 years, and I know, like, if you're given a laptop, you cannot access browser, you cannot access these applications, <laughs> but now, after COVID, everybody wants to access from anywhere, yeah. right? So uh, what this enables is, it is free, free to access your application, but you need to have few key uh, like key elements in your ac uh, network access right like say we identify we check your identity and we wa uh, want to check your device posture and then we we give you access to your internal application which is hosted within our vpc it is not public but it is provided through our verified access so that's at a very high level uh, the gist of yeah, verified access you. what are some of the best practices that you've seen implemented across public sector and commercial for customers approaching zero trust security and doing it well. Yeah, so uh, first thing is uh, like um, minimum access to any user, right? Uh, like you need to get access, if you need access to specific application, only then you get access or else there's no access to you. So that's the best practice, like that's step one for anybody. And then you, uh, like say for example, we spoke about um, the verified access, right? So in that, uh, if you want to get access in traditional network, you have to talk to your network uh, team and then your application team and then your IT admin. But with verified access, you, they will have one single pane of glass to look at your whole flow. And then if you need access, a specific access into an application, and then within that application, if you need fine grain access, everything sh can be set up within uh, uh, verified access. So that's. I think one of the uh, guiding principles for Zero Trust, and that's what we have implemented with uh, Verified Access, and th that we recommend as best practice uh, across uh, our public sector and commercial. So giving, giving folks that centralized visibility. That's correct. And making it a lot simpler. Exactly. Sounds like. Yeah, so it will make user experience simple, and also operations, like say when they want to evaluate something, or when they want to check, so every, all the logs are in central place, you can detect, and then we have observability patterns wherein you can implement uh, tools to detect anomalies or any um, intrusions. So you can get to the problem and basically you detect and prevent quickly. So the time is money, right? So it's shorter the time to detect and prevent it, that's where uh, the whole thing is. Yep. So I think AWS has done a very good job of figuring out partnerships. I mean, there are some partners where you have overlap with competing products, but even in the case of, for instance, like a Snowflake, you got a great partnership. 
yep. uh, and, and it works. The customer wants to use Snowflake, AWS is great, no problem. We'll yep. sell EC2 in, this, you know, in storage. And one of the things I've observed is in security, there's a lot of white space for partners. So CrowdStrike, you know, Octa's here, Zscaler is another one, you guys partner with them. How do you work with, with, with security partners specifically from a standpoint of integration, mm -hmm. roadmap? What level of, of, of integration, like where are those levels? Is it, is it just go to market? Is it engineering? What you could describe so that. Th that's a great question. And in fact, we are working with our partners. So basically, we went uh, through, the, if you look at the Gartner report, and if you pick the top identity provider, if you pick top network provider, and the device production, endpoint production, They're all and the cloud provider. <laughs> so you'd see this exact same names. Yeah. Uh, Okta, Zscaler, CrowdStrike, and AWS. So we are partnering together, and um, for us, like all three are our great partners, top ISV partners, mm -hmm. and I support them on public sector, but I have my colleagues who support on uh, commercial as well. So what we have done is, we are working together, coming together in terms of implementing the whole zero trust arch principles and architecture, wherein identity uh, is uh, covered by um, Okta, yeah. and then device production and endpoint production from CrowdStrike, and then the network security is provided by Zscaler, and then the whole uh, cloud encryption is uh, taken care of by AWS. Mm. So we are trying to get together, build a use case based approach, wherein uh, we, we help our customers get to their zero trust uh, journey, help in their zero trust journey, and innovate faster. So does that include things like taking advantage of Nitro enclaves and integrating it at that level? So mm -hmm. any other sort of prerequisites that a customer have has, you may take care of those up front? Is that sort of the level of integration? Yeah, definitely, and uh, th that's absolutely right. And uh, like say, especially in public sector, encryption end to end is very important. Like say, uh, in traditional architecture, you would see your uh, uh, like encryption in transit ends at like say, load balancer level, right? And then it doesn't go further. But with Nitro, you mentioned, we can go up to the instance level, we can encrypt end to end, and uh, since we, are, uh, we have great partnership with uh, these, uh, like CrowdStrike, uh, obviously, and then Zscaler and Okta, and getting together these components is great win for our customers, wherein they, they can, we, we can, like, uh, even in yesterday's keynote, the main key uh, discussion point was consolidation, so, right? So bringing these partners together and providing one single pane of glass for our clients, our customers to work on, is a great opportunity. And with Gen AI, this becomes even more important, oh, yeah. right? <laughs> because the developers we've talked to have been actually very impressed, specifically the AWS developers, with your ability to, to encrypt end-to-end, -end, yeah. not only data at rest, but data in motion, but also to fence off the, the LLM vendor mm -hmm. from that data. They can't have access to the customer data. That's correct. That's critical for privacy, for yeah, no, uh, private uh, and, AI. Uh, th that's core in our um, AI implementation, Gen AI implementation, like at AWS probably you would agree with me, security is our key, one of the key pillars and key focus for us because that's how the cloud was built, public cloud. Whenever, we, when we started, everybody is like, oh, is public uh, cloud safe, right? And that exists even today. And to your point, uh, on AIML, it's really even further, a step ahead because when you get into LLM model, and if it is like, uh, if you feeding in data, there are so many concerns from customers that, oh, will, will LLM learn my data and will any, anyone else be able to access it? So we have checks and implementation set up such a way that the customer data resides in customer account itself, perimeter itself. And even we don't have access to that. Only customer will have access to that and they can provision that the way they want. So that's yeah. really important. It's very important. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite customer story? A, a CrowdStrike, AWS, maybe Zscaler, Okta story that you, you helped re really tremendously consolidate and give them so much more value, but also really giving them helping them on that zero trust journey? What customer story comes to mind? Sure, so especially on public sector, we like we are doing a um, use case and uh, it's, it's kind of a POC model wherein we want to use uh, uh, the exact same zero trust principles at edge, right? Like say, if anybody, uh, there are so many uh, digitization, IOT devices, and similarly our snowball devices. So what we have done is we have integrated 
uh, AWS Snowball with Okta, Zscaler, CrowdStrike, and when user comes in and access like a disconnected system like Snowball, they would be even still protected end to end. So that's like great use case, and we will have more uh, expansion on that in coming months. Maybe we'll hear something at reInvent. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> What's next for the AWS CrowdStrike partnership and, and your joint customers? So, so for us, the core is we obsess over customer uh, success. Yeah. Like that's our, uh, in our blood, DNA. in our DNA, yes. exactly. <laughs> and we always work towards that and our job is never done. So I believe it's still day one and we continue doing it forever. <laughs> Yep, it's still day one. Madhu, thank you so much for joining Dave and me on the no program. No problem, thank you very much about for hosting me. Really, how you're defining zero trust architecturally, what you're doing, how you're helping customers with some of those best practices. We appreciate you walking through that journey with us. No, it's great. Thanks for coming It's my up. pleasure, thank yeah. you very much. Our pleasure to have you. Good to have you. Yep. For thank our you. guests and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from CrowdStrike Falcon 23. We'll be back after a short break, so we'll see you soon.